Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmer's experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This week we are in Nakuru County, a county that is known for the famous lakes and the beautiful flamingos. The county is also known for growing of potatoes. And we are in Keringet area, meeting a farmer who is greatly invested in potato farming amongst other cash crops. We are here to see his potato farm and also to see whether we can learn anything from him. And hopefully maybe get to eat some chips. It's too early for that, Caro, but uh, we will see. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Meet our farmers Caroline and Sami, majoring in potato farming in Keringet area. Apart from planting potatoes for business, the family also propagates seedlings to sell to other farmers. On the 25 acres, they also have cows, green peas, maize and oats, among other crops. Let's go find out how they manage their potatoes and other crops on their farm. Sami, yes, hey. Polly, you're most welcome. How are you? Thank you so much, Karibu. You seem so busy. What's going on here? Okay, we are selecting potatoes here. We want to plant. Do you, do you sell them? Yeah, I normally sell when I have a, I have enough. I sell. This is a lot of work. Yeah, do you do it, it alone? No, with my family, my wife. Let's go meet her. Yeah. Thank you right. so much. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tony and Caro, this is my wife. We have been working with her since we started this farming work. Yes. We are going on very well. Honestly. So, our wife, what's mm. your name? I'm Caroline Sam. Oh, yeah. Caroline, like me. You are welcome. To our <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure maybe there are challenges here and there. Yeah, there are challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, especially market prices. Sometimes you put a lot of input in your farm and the prices go down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You lose a lot of money. Inputs are very Inputs high. Are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're experiencing a lot of challenges, especially on the margin of profit. Yeah. That's why we are here as yeah. Shamba Shape Up, to Thank make sure that some of our experts are going to come in here okay. and help you yeah. to make sure that you are shaped up. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. All right we'll see you later on. Okay. Yeah? Thank you so much. See you. <laughs> it's like a dream come true. I never thought Shamba Shape Up will ever visit me. Oh, I'm so glad, so elated. Prices for farm inputs such as fertilizers went up in Kenya, making it even more difficult for farmers to finance this key material. That's why we've asked Emmanuel from Sigenta to talk about Mavuno Zaidi's service and how it can support farmers get financial inputs. So how long have you been growing potatoes? Over 10 years now. Now, where do you get your inputs from and how do you get them? For, okay, from the agrovets mm -hmm. and uh, for, for seeds. We get them from Calro. So how do you finance your, your, your inputs? I pull back what I get. Mm -hmm. And when it's not enough, I go for loans. Oh. Yeah. Is it a challenge? Yes, it is. Labor is expensive. Input is expensive. Leasing land is expensive. Mm -hmm. So it runs out my, whatever I have as a capital. Are more farmers complaining about inputs? Yeah, of course. Everyone is complaining. Some even are running away from farming potatoes. They don't own potatoes anymore. Yeah, it's so expensive. And the market is not stabilizing at all. As in Genta, we have a program called Mavuno Zaidi. Mavuno yes. Zaidi. Yes. What is Mavuno Zaidi? So Mavuno Zaidi is a program that started in 2014, mainly focused on grow education around uh, good agricultural practices and also, you know, linking them to input financing. What exactly is it? The way the project works is uh, to support farmers to get access to input financing, which basically means they don't get the cash. They get the inputs that they need uh, on their farm. Ah, it looks like a good idea because uh, that will quite rescue us from whatever we are going through. Supposing now Sami joins today, yes. how does he go about it? Yeah, so the first uh, step will be training 
uh, you know, on agronomy practices. You train they, him. So the training is uh, two parts. So the first one is on uh, good agricultural practices. And then the second one is on financial literacy. For example, if they go for that facility, you know, how much interest are they going to be charged? So there is that kind of training just to make sure that the farmer is, you know, uh, clear on what they are going for. Any requirement for membership or joining? So the first one, of course, the farmer has to be a farmer. <laughs> yeah, if you understand what I mean. So yes. they must have land. Uh, but when it comes to land, they don't need to necessarily own it. Can still be supported even when you're using leased land. And the general, you know, loan requirements also apply. Mm -hmm. Only that for this particular product, we've negotiated with the bank. Uh, one, we understand there are cases of uh, crop failure to, due to natural calamities. Yeah. We are able to, to take care of 50% of the cost of insurance uh, on behalf of the farmer. Yeah. That sounds quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, is, no. it, is it just for Syngenta products? Uh, no, so Mavuno Zaidi, as much as we are under Syngenta, we are able to support them to get access to the other you know, inputs they need on the farm, you know, fertilizer, uh, you know, foliar. So mm -hmm. we talk to the bank and they are able to finance um, you know, up to 100%. Yeah, excellent. All right, I'm, now like I'm sure you have burning <laughs> questions. Yeah, because uh, the, the most important question I wanted to ask was the insurance, and he has shooted that way very well. Yes. Because uh, like last season, we lost a lot because of uh, erratic rains. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Briefly, what are the advantages of a farmer like Sami here being a member of Mavuno Zaidi? So the first one is uh, they get free training. We don't charge. The farmers on this uh, program are able to get our products at a discounted rate. You're also cushioning the farmer by, you know, reducing the cost of production. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then when it comes to repayment period, um, we understand that potatoes take, you know, about three months uh, for them to be ready. We've negotiated with the bank to give farmers six months, you know, which mm -hmm. is enough time mm -hmm. for the farmer to take care of the crop, harvest, look for market. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, once they get the proceeds, they're able to pay, you know, tailored repayment period. Mavuno Zaidi, it's yeah. really good. It's good, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. How about markets? So far we have two uh, processors uh, who have already signed contract with Syngenta and, uh, you know, they are going to, to buy potatoes from the farmers. Yes. So in other words, you know, an end-to-end -end, uh, platform where the farm is handheld from the beginning up to the end. Suppose I also proceed the, ex the expenses that I use on the, on the farm. Worried about how to make a budget? Do not worry, because this is part of the training farmers receive from the Mavuno Zaidi program. And the beauty with the, the off-takers we've gotten, we agree on pricing up front, even before you plant. So you're able to even uh, tell how much you're going to together at the end of the season. You can predict. Uh, predict exactly, you know, how much you're going to get. Uh, it sounds interesting to me. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. <laughs> uh, do, do, you think you, do you think you're going to yeah. join Mavuno Zaidi? Today. Uh, today? Uh, yeah. Let's look yeah. at this potato field. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, looks good. Planning for your money is just as important as earning it. Keeping records of your income can help you trace how and where you spend most of your money. Veronica, a financial advisor, is here to talk about money planning, budgeting, and why it's important to save before spending. As women, they say we are the backbone of the family. We manage our homes, we yes. even manage our husbands. Everything. Which is good. Even plus the children. Plus the children. Plus the cats, the dogs. So what do you plan in your home? And we plan with my husband what we are going to do in the farm. Mm -hmm. Is there money to pay the casual laborers if we are planting? Is there enough fertilizer in the store? Mm -hmm. All the basic needs are there mm -hmm. in the house. At the end of all this mm. is money. money. And anything that involves money needs planning. The importance of planning, and this time around we are talking of planning for money, which is budgeting. Mm. The planning is appreciating what is our income, as a family the way you do, mm -hmm. then what are our expenses, mm -hmm. then what are our goals mm -hmm. that we want to achieve mm -hmm. with timelines. Mm -hmm. And allocate your incomes mm -hmm. to your expenses. Mm -hmm. Make sure there is a saving. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're also reserving mm -hmm. for your goals, mm -hmm. financial goals as a family. Mm -hmm. You've talked about the aspect of saving. Yes. Do you save? Yeah, we save. In fact, uh, what we did, I have two accounts. Wow. <laughs> in two different banks. Okay. Mm. He also has uh, two accounts in two different banks. Wow. Mm. So one, 
one of the banks uh, for each one of us is for savings. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the other one is recurrent expenditures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So why, why, why do you save? Last year we were saving uh, to finish up on the tractor. Mm -hmm. So that part is almost done. I'm proud of Caroline. I'm proud. This is and, a good model. Sammy, this, is, this is good. It takes this spring. It's important to save because one, incomes and expenditures, they don't always come at the same time. Mm -hmm. And if you're not saving, there is a high probability that whatever you earn, you're going to use it with unplanned expenditures. Mm -hmm. And in future, you have needs that now don't have an income to mm -hmm. meet them. Mm -hmm. So the saving helps you for future higher needs that will be bigger than your income. Mm -hmm. It also helps you to manage future emergencies. Mm -hmm. It also helps you that you're not in uh, financial stresses, mm -hmm. that you are doing emergency borrowing. Especially for farmers, you may not be harvesting every day. Mm -hmm. So when you make money, you must save for your future needs. Mm -hmm. And you should also save for future investments. Investments are those things that you want to put money in mm -hmm. that will generate income into the future. Mm -hmm. Like the way she's done on the, on the tractor. The tractor will help generate money later mm -hmm. on. I don't work with you in exactly how you will going to be doing the budgets. We said first, the budget mm -hmm. needs to start with your income. One is my salary. Your salary. We do daily farming. That comes on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So the first step, you list your incomes mm -hmm. with the amounts, mm -hmm. such that you can only budget for that which you have earned. Yes. You agreed with your husband. How much will you be saving on a monthly basis? We look at uh, the approximate amount of inputs which we will require. Okay. We put aside school fees and everything. And there are some money for emergency. And then the rest we put it in the other account. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Now, that is where we are going to improve. You will put on a figure yeah, mm -hmm. that you plan to be putting aside, mm -hmm. such that when the inputs go high, you are not left out with nothing to save. So you need to put a target that maybe on a monthly basis from daily farming, from your teaching, you're putting aside maybe 2,000, yeah? But when you have a bumper harvest, you're putting aside maybe 50,000. Then you now come and list the expenses that you will be having. Mm -hmm. Because if you start with expenses, mm -hmm. expenses always comes like a flood. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a probability that you not save. Veronica went on to explain that it's important for Caroline to save money for later use, and this will also help in case of an emergency. Caroline and her husband need 60,000 shillings to finish their tractor. They are able to save 2,000 shillings monthly from her salary and selling of milk, and 50,000 shillings when they harvest potatoes. This will help them buy the tractor at the end of the year and still remain with some money. So budget becomes a roadmap for your financial and family growth. Stay with us. There is more to come after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Ship Up. We are visiting Sami and Caroline, good potato farmers in Keringet. We want to find out how solar pumps can cut costs and how to manage potato pests and diseases. So, no time to waste. Let's go back to work. Let's go. But first, Sami's potato bank looks like a shed. There is everything in here with lots of holes in the shelves. I think we need a makeover to make sure that the potatoes are clean and safe. Let's get to it. Sammy. Yes, sir. So this is your well. This is my well. Quite deep, isn't yes, it? Yes, 45 feet. Wow. Yes, yes. So how do you operate it? I'm using a power. Mm -hmm. Electricity. So you have an electric pump? Yes, there is a pump. Any challenges with that? Ah, a lot of challenges. It's very expensive to use electricity. Electricity in our area sometimes it goes off for so many hours and yes. maybe we need water for the for domestic and for the cattle. I think we have a better solution for you. Yes. But before we go to that, just yes. have a look at this clip mm. here. Yes. Changing weather patterns have made it difficult for farmers to plan their seasons. 
The Davies and Shutcliffe Company are here setting up a solar pump for Farmer Caleb and Brian will tell us more on this solar pumping solution. How has farming been for you, especially now with the climate changing and all that? Where we are standing a few meters from here, back in 2018, I lost my entire crop. I lost everything, there was a drought. Mm -hmm. Dependence on rain for a modern day farmer is not tenable anymore. Uh -huh. You have to think of irrigation mm -hmm. and drip irrigation for that matter. Drip irrigation really helps a farmer to, number one, conserve water. If rainfall is minimal, then the farmer is harvesting some little water, then he has to use it very optimally. And drip irrigation does exactly that. Okay. You only give the plant what it needs. Good, good. So, Caleb, when you decided on drip irrigation, you must have considered a pump. I've been using uh, the petrol uh, pump. It works well, but the cost of fuel unit has gone up. I have to pass on the cost to the customers, or I have to go green. I don't have another option. The petrol pump, does it break down? The cost comes in in terms of the overall maintenance. You go look at the oil, go look at the plugs, you go look at just the general wear and tear. You automatically become a mechanic as a farmer. Yes. Sometimes you're not really good at it. And since you're not very good at it, sometimes I'm sure your pump was smoking. Oh, it smokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what we normally advise farmers, if, especially if they want to reduce the operational cost at the farm, is to adopt a solar water pumping solution. Solar water, water pump. pumping solution. It saves you money because once it's installed, when the sun comes up, you're able to use solar energy to pump water without any worries. Uh -huh. Right now, I can see there's some installation going on. Yeah. So, Caleb, what made you now think of changing, upgrading to the solar pump? We, we have to be smart in what we are doing. So I'm looking forward to seeing the solar pump working because my clients, I'm going to pass on the benefits to them at the end of the day. Wow. Yeah. So, so Brian, yeah. how does a farmer cut costs when you compare the petrol mm -hmm. and the solar pump? Yeah, most farmers like Caleb spend averagely between 800 shillings to 1,000 shillings every week just on the petrol. And it's not just petrol alone, it's also the transport costs involved because you don't get the petrol from here. So the first things a solar water pump will do is make sure that you're not adding more money to the solution. You can save up to 70% uh, of your costs every week when you're using a solar water pump. Mm -hmm. Caleb had said he was, uh, he was becoming a mechanic as well as a farmer. It's pretty easy to manage and there is minimal maintenance. You don't have to have extra knowledge on, 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 on solar water pumps. Farmers that use solar water pumps, like he said, he's reduced his costs. So it means you can pump more water over time and it becomes much more than your farm needs. What you can therefore do is to even resell that water to the next, the next person in the next farm. If you are tilling like two acres, you can now till five acres. So today, Brian, what kind of pump are we installing for Caleb? Today we are installing a surface pump that will be taking water from his dam and taking it over to his tank. Surface a pump? surface pump. Does it mean you have different kinds of pumps? Yes, we do have different kinds of for pumps. For drip irrigation? For drip irrigation. So if he was having a shallow well, then you'd have a submersible pump that would be put inside the water to get the water out. But since he's doing it on a dam, we have a surface pump that just gets water from the surface, passes it on to the tank. Does it mm -hmm. pump throughout or do I go and switch it on and off? If the pump is on, as soon as the sun comes up, it starts. But the good thing is you can be able to control the controller for the pump from your phone. So that gives you a lot of flexibility in even how long you want to pump. It's exactly. connected to the phone Connected network? to the phone, yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I can't wait for you to switch it on and start planting today. <laughs> really? I, I can't wait. Because the idea is to produce off-season. When everybody else is not planting, you're the one who's planting, you're the one who's selling. Smart farming. Smart farming. Mm -hmm. And it uses solar power, so, oh. so no more electricity. It uses the sun? Yes. Would you be interested Very in this? Very interested, instead of using electricity, which is so expensive. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect very little rain across Kenya. Northeastern, Upper Eastern, Lower Eastern, all the way to the coastal region will see no rain or very little rain of less than 15 millimeters. This includes Mandera, Wajia, Marsabit, Kitui, Machakos, Makueni, Tutana River, Mombasa and Kwale. 
However, some parts of Garissa and Lamu may receive rains of up to 75 millimeters. The Mount Kenya region, including Meru and Daraka, expects moderate amount of rainfall of up to 50 millimeters. Central Kenya counties such as Nyandarwa, Kirinyaga, and Embu will get rainfall ranging from 5 to 50 millimeters, with Laikipia and its surroundings getting rains of less than 15 millimeters. Nairobi and Kambu will see very little rain of between 15 and 50 millimeters. The Rift Valley expects very little to moderate amount of rain ranging from 5 to 50 millimeters. Trukana and West Pokot will receive rainfall ranging from 5 to 50 millimeters. Transoia, Wasingishu, Bomet, Kericho, Nakuru and Narok expect a little bit more rain ranging from 15 to 75 millimeters. Western region counties such as Bungoma, Busia and Kakamega will get moderate amount of rainfall of up to 50 millimeters. Nyanza region also expects rainfall ranging from 25 to 75 millimeters. This includes Siaya, Kisumu, Homabay, Kisi and Nyamira. Farmers after harvest, prune your fruit trees to remove disease and dead branches. This way, your fruits will get more light and grow bigger and healthier fruits. Remember to harvest water now to use when dry. For more weather news and farming tips, get in touch with iShamba on 0711 I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. <laughs> Farmers, this is the time that you're scouting out for pests and diseases, isn't it? Being able to know and understand what affects your crops can help you prevent and manage them and ensure you get better yields. Emmanuel from Sigenta is here to discuss some of the diseases that affect potatoes. Let's find out how to identify and how to manage them. How big is this piece of land? This five acres. Five acres. Yeah. And you've basically been just planting potatoes? Uh, no, I do sometimes rotation. Mm -hmm. I do cabbages, mm -hmm. I do peas, mm -hmm. and potatoes. Um, and again, when it comes to crop rotation, it's also important for the farmer to know, you know, we have what we call the crop families. So, you, for example, he cannot take potatoes from this farm and then now plant tomatoes because, you know, they are from the same family. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to see the same diseases that affect potatoes affecting the tomatoes, the same pests also affecting the tomatoes, hence also raising his cost of production because of now uh, continued pest and disease management. Mm -hmm. So when I look at uh, the crop, I can agree that uh, he's trying, but we, we can also see, you know, some weeds huh? Uh, on the farm, this results into you know competition for nutrients, water, and light. At the end of the day, it's going to affect his yield, uh, and therefore we recommend you know early weed management. Mm. Let's recap. To prevent pests and diseases, rotate between different crop families each season. Make sure you clear your field of weeds and always use disease-free certified seeds. Another thing that we also encourage farmers as part of the good agricultural practices is proper varietal selection. Recently, as you might have seen uh, on media, there are restaurants that are not getting the varieties uh, that they prefer. Uh, they're importing and on the other side, farmers have potatoes uh, rotting on the farm. So it all goes back to the variety and we're encouraging farmers not just to focus on the shangi variety, but also now do the processing type of varieties. Varieties that can be used to do chips, to do crisps and other products as well. And what affects your potatoes? Like, are they affected by diseases, by pests? Of course. Mm -hmm. Now, after emerging, we are having a problem of cutworms. Okay. And uh, then uh, we're having a problem of blight. Mm -hmm. How do you spot this? Uh, now the crop is uh, beyond the stage that can be affected by the cutworms. But uh, when the crop is still very young, you will notice that uh, some plants, you know, are falling on the ground and maybe drying up even if it is, you know, a rainy period. And when you dig up some soil a bit, you'll be able to find the pest down there. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to blight, normally you will spot it from, uh, you know, the browning of uh, the leaves. Mm. Yes. What will you recommend that he does? So yes. we recommend that he does, you know, frequent uh, scouting for pests and diseases. And uh, when scouting for pests, normally you, you turn the leaves and, you know, you check the, the, the lower under, side yeah. uh, of the leaves. And the mm. best time for scouting, again, uh, early morning hours or, you know, evening. Because right now, you know, they are all over. They are moving. You know, the temperatures are high, it's windy mm -hmm. and all that. So it might give you a false impression that the crop is healthy when the actual picture is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is important to have certified seeds because, one, you know, they are disease-free. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. For the pests, um, we have a product that can help uh, Sami. Uh, it's called Engeo. 
these are products that's not just targeted at the caterpillars, but also targets, you know, the aphids and the other potato pests. Normally when you talk to farmers, they'll say uh, kifagio. They mm -hmm. call it kifagio because it eradicates quite a number of uh, pests. All right. Uh, he also talked about blight and uh, actually we can see the blight mm -hmm. uh, on the leaves. We recommend that farmers do rotational uh, application of uh, uh, fungicides, uh, whereby they are not just using one particular fungicide, which will result in crops building resistance to other particular fungicide. Mm -hmm. So um, the first fungicide uh, is called Ridomil, uh, and this is uh, you know really good when it comes to blight management. Mm -hmm. And as I said, uh, we want him to do it you know rotationally so that the crops do not build resistance. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when he applies Ridomil, um, he's supposed now to alternate with the uh, Revus. Okay. And then in terms of application interval, uh, it's, it's also seven days. So if uh, he applies today, uh, he'll wait for seven days and then alternate with, uh, with Revus. So mm -hmm. he'll keep alternating uh, from you know, the third week up to the time when the crop is almost ready for harvesting. Blight can be controlled using Ridomil and Rivers. Mix 50 grams of Ridomil in a 20-liter knapsack and spray. Then, after seven days, switch to spraying with rivers so that the disease doesn't build resistance. You need to take care of the pre-harvest interval, or PHI. This means that you have to wait at least seven days after spraying your potato before you can harvest them. If you harvest and sell or eat before, it is dangerous to your health. Okay, during our spraying interval, maybe we might yes. be spraying at the wrong time also. You know, timing of the day. Yeah, so we recommend early morning spraying or late evening uh, spraying. Again, uh, like right now, you see it is very windy. So when you are spraying, again, we recommend that um, one, as much as you'll have the personal protective equipment, the PPEs, uh, you also look at uh, the direction of the wind. Like right now, the wind is coming this direction. So you're not supposed to spray uh, going that direction it. because, yeah. you know, you're yeah. be inhaling the chemicals. Yeah. So we recommend that you spray going towards the direction of, okay. of the wind. Yeah. Mm. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And look at this. The potato bank is all done. Sami and Karo. Yes. What do you think of the store? Wonderful. Wonderful. It looks so nice. Mm. At least you can walk around checking on the potatoes, on the seeds mm -hmm. with ease. And it looks so neat. And of course, when you came to the store, there was some oil. Machinery, lots of things mixed with mm. potatoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You can see they are not here anymore. They are, yeah, you've given us an idea of where to keep them. So there will be no more contamination. Yeah, they won't touch our potatoes anymore. With the fertilizer prices up, the Shamba Shape Up team surprised Sami with a few bags for planting the next season. In the next five years, we are going to be a model farm, whereby other people will be coming to see what we are doing. Because we've learned a lot from Shamba Shape Up. Right, so if our farmers are happy, yeah. We are happy. And we'll see you in the next Shamba. Shamba.